and who will win we'll quickly see with an analogy again suppose let's take this is a piece of diamond you know all glittering and there is a team a and there's a team b both these teams need this diamond so they play a tug of war match my question is which team will get the diamond very good question someone said that for us to answer that we need to know how many people are there in both the teams and also the weight of each person or the strength of each person so i say that a is a three member team and b is a two member team and each person in team a weights 30 kgs just an example and each member in team b weighs 15 kgs that's the case the total weight of team a is 90 and the total weight of team b is 30. so do you all agree that team which has highest strength will be able to pick up the diamond much easily in the tug of war match compared to team which has lower strength similarly in electronics when there is a fight between N3 and N1, do you all agree that we cannot lose this zero because we want to read this zero? So if we don't want to lose this zero, who is trying to keep node A to zero? Very well said. I'm very happy. N1, that's true. So in this fight, because we want to ensure that A should be kept at zero and A does not lose its value, N1 should be stronger than N3. Uh, when it comes to MOSFETs, what do we understand? The strength is given in terms of W by L ratio. So this means W by L of N1 should be greater than W by L of N3 if we want to ensure that we don't lose a zero mind you reading has still not happened we have just ensured that a will be stabilized to zero so this condition is called a read stability criteria now you might also want to understand this in terms of resistance now what do we understand from Ohm's law is V is equal to IR that also means that I is inversely proportional to R if my V is constant. In case of MOSFETs we know that ID is directly proportional to W by L. Because voltages are going to be constant this also implies that ID or W by L is inversely proportional to resistance. So what we previously saw was W by L of N1 greater than W by L of N3 also implies that resistance of N1 should be less than resistance of N3. Does that make sense to everyone? So with this we complete read stability criteria let's march ahead and understand the right stability criteria as well